All right, everyone, it's really funny to see Vox, like, take every side of every issue. They're trying to churn shit out because they're in decline, which is why they're trying to target YouTubers and shit and try to knock us off, because they have to compete with us, and they're not competing very well. Even though they're given priority status, basically Vox is just a YouTube channel now anyway. They should fire 90% of their employees. They could do what they're doing with five or six people very easily, and it wouldn't be a problem. Freelance the rest of it, you know, con subcontract or whatever. They'd make a lot of money, too. Well, they'd make less money, but they wouldn't have to pay nearly as many people nearly as much to do that kind of work. They could go to work in their slippers and robes every day and be quite happy, I think. But one thing is abundantly clear. Vox has chosen a candidate, by and large. They want Elizabeth Warren to be, <laughs> be the Democratic nominee. Now, I, I keep warning the Democrats, she's one of the worst possible contenders. You'd be better off with a Buttigieg, you'd be better off with Kamala Harris than you would be with Elizabeth Warren. Why? There are two glaring problems with Elizabeth Warren that nobody at Vox seems to want to address or admit to. This, this is a fluff piece article trying to apologize for the fact that she gets compared to Clinton, because she is basically Clinton 2.0, only a little bit more coherent, and, and maybe without the health problems. She lied about her ethnicity, and she's fucking cringy as hell. Her, her video of her cooking and, and cracking open a beer, look, I'm one of the boys, look, I drink beer just like all of you do, haha, ha, I'm secretly an alcoholic. Come on, get off of it. And lying about being Cherokee for most of your life, and literally inking a pen and putting down Native American on legal documents knowing it wasn't true. My goodness, that'll bite you in the ass. By the way, there's a secret third reason, and I'm sure that if you've, you know, watched the Charlemagne the Man thing, this is a big problem. When confronted, when it's not a fluff piece, when it's not teleprompted, when a question is not entirely friendly, when someone throws her a curveball, what does she do? One of two things. She freezes up and barely knows how to respond and stutters and stumbles through her words. That's, that's terrible for a politician to do. Or even worse than that, she gets combative. Now, I hate to say this. There will be some people that say this is misogynistic and wrong. Yes, females in politics, like it or not, I don't support this method of thinking, but this is the way it is, by and large are not judged the same as males when they get combative. Let's just put it out there. Yes, there's a double standard. There's some people who are like, you know, MGTOW or something, they'll probably disagree too. No, no, no. They have it easy. No, no. You know, behind, in the privacy of a voting booth, it's a little bit different. Yes, people judged Clinton more harshly than Trump for saying similar things. Now, of course, part of that is because Trump had a registered persona for his entire fucking life of saying weird shit, and so nobody really found it that surprising. They found it entertaining. Hillary Clinton had always slicked herself back, and looked more chic. She, she's really good at operating behind the scenes. Clinton is, is a total Valkyrie for her husband through his entire political career. She snipes people from, from the background. He's the friendly, personable face that shakes hands and schmoozes, and she covers his tracks when he dicks somebody. That's basically Hillary Clinton's dynamic. Very good at what she did. Came a heartbeat away from the presidency. So, you know, it was a pretty great time for her. Nobody can deny her skills. Same is true of Elizabeth Warren, although she's not owed as many favors, so she's still in third or fourth place. The fact is, she has to knock Bernie Sanders out in order to become the nominee. Her, her main opponent is Bernie Sanders. Whereas Joe Biden, who is his main opponent? Buttigieg. <laughs> his next, the, the next place finishers are Buttigieg and Beto, and if he can like knock one of them out, he's almost guaranteed the nomination. Warren has to fend off Bernie Sanders and potentially also Kamala Harris to get to Biden numbers. It's not going to happen, dude. If it did, I would I would enjoy it. It'd certainly be Trump 2020. I would make a prediction the next day. Yes, unless he dies on stage or or gets removed from office. Yes, Trump will be reelected. Because I mean, Elizabeth Warren also has additional baggage. For most of her career, she was just a neoliberal. Long track record of being a standard Democrat. In the last few years, and I, I mentioned this, I think, four years ago, if I remember correctly, she has steadily tried to rebrand herself as a progressive. But she was never a progressive. She was a standard, you know, tough on crime style. Guns are bad, taxes are good, neoliberal. You know, basically social democracy light, as Bernie Sanders would probably chastisingly call it. She's, she's no maverick. She's not some young upstart Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez style candidate. I mean, I'm sure she would appease the further left if she were nominated because she'd take up some of their issues. She's talked well about the New Green Deal, which is hilarious and also potentially baggage as well. The problem for Warren 
is that because of the schismatic nature of the Democratic Party, you have a core of the Democrats, again, 10, 15% that are like business Dems, center left, like actual moderates. They will not go for someone who's too far left. You have another 10, 15%, especially younger, urbanite Democrats, the youth of the party, more, much more far left. They've been you know, propagandized to into thinking that Mao was a good person, and they're not going to vote for someone too neoliberal. Warren has tried to straddle this line, and, and she, it doesn't look like it's going to work. She's going to end up getting dragged to the left and alienate the business Dems. The, the only people in the field right now, I think, who could capture the business Dems are, are Biden and Buttigieg. Now, Buttigieg, ironically, if he would stop, like, you know, being not taken seriously and stop, like, pre pretending that Trump is orange man bad in a, in a more nasty way, I think probably would end up becoming the nominee. Yes, I think he could easily be nominated, despite the fact that he's not even 40. Yeah, and he's fairly well-spoken and stuff. Biden, meanwhile, is ancient, uh, and it would be a problem. Absolutely, it'd be a problem if Biden becomes the nominee, but Warren can't do it. What would Warren do if Trump got on stage? Here's debate number one between Trump and Warren. They probably don't even shake hands. Warren will give very, very strategically measured teleprompter style responses to everything. That's what she's good at. Trump will use his entire time to grandstand and wheedle and insult and deliver low blows until she cracks like an egg, takes the bait, and is antagonized and responds. They get into a shouting match. She gets judged much more harshly than Trump. He smug, smugly smirks on the side. His fans go wild, love every minute of it, turn out sores through the roof, and she loses. That's when she loses against Trump. First debate. That's what I think would happen. If she gets nominated, the odds of him of him being reelected approach 100%. Right now, I'd say 80, 90% because we don't know who it is going up against him. All we know is the economy is good and we're not in a major war. That's all we have to look at, and polling is for him moving in a decent direction. Everything else is fine. It's just a matter of knowing who he's going to be up against. If it's someone like Buttigieg, he might lose. In all honesty, if it's Biden, Biden has a snowflake's chance in hell at least. It'd be hilarious to see him be back in the White House at his age. He'd be turning 80 before he'd be seeking re-election. He'd be a one-termer. The Democrats would have to file off without an incumbent. Have the Democrats thought of that? Even with Warren. Warren's no spring chicken. She's Trump's age anyway. You got a, a bunch of people, all the front runners of the Democratic Party are unelectable, basically. And then Kamala's the only one in the top five. Well, you know, that's not under 40. Uh, that's of, you know, more of a standard age. I think she's 56 or something. That's fine, but then she's got, you know, even more baggage, arguably, than Warren does. Elizabeth Warren's nuts, and Vox is, is pitching for her to be the Democratic nominee. Please nominate Warren. I would love also to see who she chooses as a running mate. It'd probably be Beto O'Rourke. Ironically, like, Biden should choose someone like Kamala Harris. She would have to choose someone like Beto. Considerably younger, number one, kind of dynamic, kind of goofy. Be, a, be like Joe Biden in reverse, age-wise. You know, someone kind of kind of goofy, someone who can work a crowd and do the event. Yeah, Beto would be perfect for a running mate. Comes from Texas, uh, might give the Democrats a, a bit of a boost there, keep things moving demographically in a good direction. And then she probably strokes out because she's old. And then, you know, we have President Beto O'Rourke, Texas Democrat. Wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, they should do that. That's about all. Peace out.